Hello, hello, this is Joe from Nerd in Korea. We are doing another one of our set reviews here, looking at Innistrad Crimson Vow this time, the top five value cards. So top five value cards, we are going to look at the top five value cards. Yeah, as I just said, I'm using MTG Goldfish, mostly because it's much easier to read. If you want to see the whole set, it has the whole set just laid out and you can sort it by value. So it is much, much easier than even things like TCG Player will show you like four different versions of the same card with different values and it's like, how much does it cost though? So yeah, anyway. Um, I will be doing the bundle opening next week, so we're getting it done before the big Halloween holiday. Yeah. Oh, not a sponsor, right. Mm. Oh, please hit like and subscribe. It makes such a big difference, really. Uh, also, the comments I really appreciate. Some people have put, so like, going out of the way to just be like, Hey, I like the video. Thanks a lot. Um, that really does make a big difference. Thank you so much. Chandra Dress to Kill. The number five is one red red for this Planeswalker. Chandra Planeswalker, of course. Three starting loyalty is a little bit low. You'd like something higher, but yeah. This only really is... This has one place, right? A mono red? Probably like some kind of like deck where you're just burning... No pun intended, where you're burning through your cards. Okay, so add a red. Chandra Dressed Kill deals one damage to target player or planeswalker. Okay. Yeah. Um, meh. And for plus one, also you can exile the top card of your library. If it's red, you may play that this turn. Okay, that's basically just extra card draw, right? That's the good option right there. It's only plus one. So, uh, definitely if you're going to play this, proliferate, right? You're going to want to have probably a mono red deck because of this these effects like exile and play it if it's red and um also yeah you can uh b -b -b i already forgot what i was saying so that's great yeah proliferate with super friends and proliferate you know if you're using a bunch of planeswalkers ideally probably a bunch of chandra planeswalkers but anyway okay i'm getting ahead of myself the minus seven, the ultimate, this is a great one. Exile the top five cards of your library. You may cast red spells from among them this turn. Five extra cards that turn. Only for that turn, so there's kind of a downside built in there, but five cards is not messing around. You get an emblem with whenever you cast a red spell. This emblem deals X damage to any target where X is the amount of uh, mana spent to cast that spell. Whoa, right? So every red spell. It doesn't say red, instant red, sorcery, red, creature. No, just red spell. Any, any red spell. So if you're doing mono red, once again, this is going to be like almost every card, right? You, you'll have maybe some artifacts that are colorless and you'll play lands, all right? But yeah, everything you cast is probably going to be like red, 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 red. It's just going to be, like, be a pile of damage every single turn. Um, so yeah, especially you can get this more than once, right? You could get two of these emblems. So yeah, if you get two of them, um, not easy to do maybe. You need a lot of like proliferate and stuff like that. But with two of them, they take double damage for your casting cost of red every turn. You just, that's going to win the game right there. Anyway, 550. I think it's worth the 550. Her first ability is what looks boring. Anyway. Hallowed Haunting, two white white for this enchantment. Um, as long as you control seven or more enchantments, creatures you, you control have flying and vigilance. Strong and combo, strong combo. Uh, vigilance in particular, if you're gonna give all of your creatures something, I almost prefer it was vigilance, right? It gives you so many more options and makes it so much more difficult for anyone else. So like the math for everyone else gets so much more complicated because you just attack every time and you never have to worry about blockers. They're, they're always going to be untapped for blocking. Just simplifies things. Anyway, evasion's good too, but whenever you cast an enchantment spell, create a spirit creature token with this creature's power and toughness are each equal to the number of spirits you control. So an enchantment spirit deck is very doable. Spirits and enchantments have a lot of like synergy. So yeah, you can get some real value out of that. And um, 
it's just like having seven or more enchantments in an enchantment matters deck is not hard to do and you're gonna get this like flying in vigilance for all of your creatures that's uh that's some value also you're gonna keep creating these creatures that are gonna like probably be reasonably sized as well so especially if you keep making the tokens it's not limited to like once per turn or anything so if you keep making these tokens they're each gonna like keep making each other bigger so it's crazy. Anyway, 975. Necro Duality. Oh boy. Um, three and a blue for this enchantment. Zombie decks need this. Anytime a non-token uh, non zombie enters the battlefield under your control, create a token that's a copy of that creature. Again, enters the battlefield. So if it's coming from your graveyard, going into the battlefield, you make two of them. You make a copy every time. Oh boy, yeah, zombies, just because they are going to keep bouncing out of the graveyard so frequently, this is just going to be an insane amount of value. If you've got a zombie uh, deck and it has blue, you should probably already have this card, and if you don't, go get it. Anyway, 1295. For what it does, 1295 is not bad. Cultivator Colossus. This is the one I'm probably like, eh, okay. So, four green, 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 seven CMC, that's high. And yeah, this is, it has power and toughness e equal to the number of lands you control. So for gr a green ramp deck, this could be very strong. Still, it costs seven. But when it enters the battlefield, you may put a land from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. If you do, draw a card and repeat this process. So this can drop, um, I put up to three lands. I th I'm counting two right now. Two lands in the battlefield when it comes in. I, oh, I you know, I think I was counting land drop and then two lands. So that turn you're getting three is what I meant. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, it's, you know, it's okay. I maybe am missing something. I feel like I'm missing something. Trample is always nice, but 1296, should this be one of the top value cards? I feel like no, but okay, it is. Toxril the Corrosive. This is a huge step up in power from the previous ones. Five black black for a legendary creature, a slug horror. I love the slug. Um, anyway, does he not have a shell? It looks like he has a shell. Maybe not. Okay. No, that's just his back. Okay, never mind. So, this, uh, let's read him. At the beginning of each end step, put a, excuse me, a slime counter on each creature you don't control. The whole board, except for your creatures, is get, are getting just like a pile of these slime counters. Creatures you don't control get minus one, minus one for each slime counter on them. So this is good, just going to like start draining them out. Uh, even indestructible, it doesn't care, it's a minus counter, right? Whenever a creature you don't control with a slime counter on it dies, create a 1-1 one, one black slug creature token. So this is just going to like start wiping out their boards and as it does, it creates tokens for you. This is a crazy card, uh, especially I, in any kind of aristocrat strategy which Black loves, I think this would go excellent. This would be a great card in the 99, I would probably not use this as commander, but anyway. Also you can pay a blue and a black, sacrifice a slug, draw a card. So maybe that's where it hits a bit of a wall. Is that if it if it said like white black or green black, you'd probably um, get more out of that. But yeah, blue and black, this doesn't feel like a demir card. But anyway, okay, you can turn that sacrifice into card draw. That is a demir ability. I'll give it that. Uh, overall, though, I want this maybe in a deck that didn't have blue. Anyway, sixteen forty nine. My top pick. So I'm going to say my top pick here, which is not one of the ones that we've covered so far. Um, this is one where I was very confused. I didn't understand why it, like, it wasn't one in the top value cards. And if you're familiar with the set, you could probably guess what it is, but we'll see. Actually, well, there's two I had a hard time choosing between, but yeah. This has not been errata. This is, I'm going to go over that in a second, but this has not been made illegal in, in any uh, 
uh, buh -buh formats or errated or anything. Why it's the price it is, I don't understand. Hullbreaker Horror, five blue blue. Okay, that's high. I admit that's high. Seven CMC for a seven eight flash. Seven CMC for a seven eight flash. Not terrible, not great. This spell can't be countered. Also, a spell you you hold up your mana and makes everyone nervous, especially with a pile of blue mana, and then you're gonna cast a spell that can't be countered. Um, you're probably you're probably getting pe like faking people out and like getting them to hold up mana for their counter spells with that. So anyway, whenever you cast a spell, choose up to one return target spell you don't control to its owner's hand. So if someone's casting a spell, you can just put it back in their hand. Not really a counter spell per se, but a bounce effect on spells. Um, just as good. Return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand whenever you cast a spell. So if you've got like a bunch of low cost instants that do whatever, that even just like draw a card for you, you play it, draw your card, yeah, you counter the effect. It's not a counter spell, so I'm 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 aware maybe you shouldn't be using the word counter, but and then yeah, you can just you can clear out someone's board, you can like counter their spells, or sorry, balance their spells back to their hand, maybe counter I should stop saying, but anyway. Insanely good. Four dollars and eleven cents. Okay, I'm gonna take a look here, and this is the, the gatherer website. If you want to check any rules or cards or anything like that, this is the place to go. Um, so, you can see details here, Hallbreaker Horror, it says everything about the card, and down here is where they'd have any errata. There is no errata for this card. None. Okay, which is kind of odd considering it's dive in price. Anyway, sets and legality. As I said, no errata and legal. Pioneer legal, modern legal, legacy legal, vintage legal, commander legal. Historic legal, explorer legal. Why? Why is it? Why is the price dropping then? Doesn't make sense. That's why I say. Why? Why? Anyway, all right. So this has been the top five value cards and my pick uh, from Innistrad Crimson Val. If you have another pick, please let me know and take it easy.